Hello, praise the Lord. This is Bill Easter. It is day eight of the 21-day journey. It's lasted a little longer than 21 days, but we're getting through it. Give you time to soak your teeth into it a little bit. Pray that God is touching you. The Holy Spirit's empowering you. Wow, we've been in some awesome revival services, Hackleburg, Alabama, and we're going to war camp this weekend. Uh, things are just happening in North Alabama, all over the United States. Come on, the Holy Ghost is stirring. It's time to get in. Praise God. I want to read from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6 today. And it says, Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. It's talking about King Saul. Uh, man, God just chose him. The people decided they wanted a king to serve. God wasn't too happy about it, but he was going to fulfill the people's desires to give them a king. And uh, man, here's Saul. He's going to look for his father's donkeys that have been lost. He had no idea that day that he was going to be anointed by the prophet, and then the next day that he would join a band of prophets who were playing music and prophesying, and he would begin to prophesy, and the Spirit of God would come upon him and change him into another man. That's what happens when the Spirit of God comes upon you. He changes you into another man. That's why it's called Holy Spirit. Praise God. And man, God's just looking for people to come upon. We, we know in the Old Testament that God chose certain men. We'll find out later. S Samson had a problem. He used this anointing he had to, uh, to bless himself, to take care of himself, to get whatever he wanted. And we find out that King Saul had a problem. And it says in chapter 15, verse 24, Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. And boy, that's a problem today in America. I think um, too many pulpits are, are taking a poll to see what people want to hear, what message they want to hear. We don't want to offend anybody or hurt anybody's feelings or run anybody off. Jesus didn't take no polls when he preached the gospel. In fact, I believe in John chapter uh, six, he told them, "You're going to have to eat my blood and drink, uh, eat my flesh and drink my blood." And eventually, most of those that were following left. They said, "This is a hard saying. How can we do this?" Most of them left, but he asked Peter and the uh, disciples. He said, "What about you? Are you going to go too?" And they said, "Who else can we go to? You have the words to eternal life." And so they stayed with him. But when the Spirit of God comes and when He's moving in power, He will not compromise. God is not a God of compromise. He's looking for men and women that will stand up and speak the truth in love. Praise God, not yelling and, uh, you know, not in anger or bitterness. I don't speak this in anger and bitterness. I speak it out of passion, hallelujah, because there's something burning inside of me that wants to see revival in America, that wants to see God's people carry everything that God wants them to have. It's time now. Now is the time, and today is the day. Keep saying that. We're believing that. We're going to see that. We're seeing uh, kids, young people, college kids coming in, getting touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. Heard uh, a message that was preached uh, at Pastor Kilpatrick's church where the uh, minister pulled up a 20-year-old, a 50 to 55-year-old, a 65 to 70-year-old, said, here's the problem. The 20-year-old's hungry for God, hungry to see the power of God move. I believe it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, that the kingdom of God comes in power, not in word. And so, and it said, then the 50 to 50 year old said, well, I've seen God move in revival, but something happened. It brought division. It split churches apart. Uh, people left. Let's just get back to the seeker sensitive, calm, friendly, not have all this division going on. And then they get to the 65 year old and that was born in revival, seen the power of God move, knows what the power is and still going after the power of God. And the pastor said, what we need to do is, is pull this 50 to 55 year old out of way and get the 20 to the 65 year old together so they can go after heaven. Come on. Don't be the person that's standing in the way of going after heaven or a young person going after heaven. You know, uh, in, in, uh, Joshua, it says there came a time after Joshua died that there was a generation that rose up that did not see the miracles of God or, or wasn't told about the miracles of God and they fell away to idols. How, how can we be upset when our children fall away to idols because they're not seeing a true demonstration of the power of God and the love of God? Man, it, it takes God, uh, 
uh, loving people also, loving them into this thing and through this thing. And, you know, why do we do this? Not to lift ourselves up. We do this for God's glory, for God's kingdom, and not to manipulate anybody, but to see them fulfill their destiny. You'll never fulfill your destiny without the Spirit of God moving in your life. Woo! You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. It'll change you into another person. I know when God baptized me in the Holy Ghost, it changed me into another person. Within two weeks, I had a talk with my wife about this, and she said, what's happened to you in the past two weeks? I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit came and changed me into another person. God bless you. This is day eight. Can't wait for day nine. Don't sure when it's going to happen, but it's coming. In Jesus' name, you be blessed and be full of the Holy Spirit. Don't use it for your own gain. Don't compromise and please people with it, but use it to glorify God and bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. Amen.